In this video, we're going to make my origami pumpkin. This is made out of two sheets of A4 sized paper. Um, I recommend using fairly thick paper. Um, just for clarity, this particular paper is rather thin, but it's actually white on the other side, which is going to help us to visualise which way up our creases are going. But I wouldn't recommend using that kind of paper. And this, as I said, this A4 paper I'm using is rather thin in places. So, but we're going to, nevertheless, we're going to demonstrate with this. So here's my sheet of A4. And first thing we're going to do, this is coloured side up if that, that applies to you, is I'm going to fold this into apes. First of all, I'm going to fold it horizontally in, in half. All of our folds will have to be quite precise. There's a lot of pre-creasing. I'm making a fairly firm crease, not overly sharp because this paper is quite delicate, but enough so that we can always see that crease. So I'm going to fold the edges to that crease. make two identical units. So that's quarters. We need to fold into eighths as well. So each of these needs to be in half. I personally like to fold to a raw edge where, where possible. So I'm going to put one of these back in place. I'm going to fold this edge to here, which will give us our crease through that segment. Folding in half. Like that. Just another segment done. So we do it on this side. Put that one in place. Fold this edge. That just leaves the outside edges to fold. So I'm going to fold this to the first crease. Turn it around to the last about eighths. So now on one side of our paper We've got funny creases going across. We're going to make diagonal creases and we're actually going to make those on the other side of the paper. So, um, But before we do that, our diagonal creases are actually going to be based on a 2 by one rectangle. So I'm actually going to mark that on here. So to create, to mark a 2 by one rectangle, I'm going to fold this one, two, three, four segments. I'm going to fold this edge to the centre crease. I'm not actually making a fold. I'm just holding this here in place. I'm not making a fold. All I'm going to do is use where that corner is pointing to, and make a pinch. Like that. Not very accurate, let's have a go at making that pinch. There, there's our pinch, and I'm going to fold that all the way across. Firm crease. So that is a two by one rectangle, and we're just going to fold this edge back to the top. start folding our diagonal creases. I'm going to take two segments 
I finally fold it across. You can see I'm revealing white paper on this on this paper, and this is where we're going to make our diagonal creases. This white rectangle. We're going to crease both diagonals. I'm going to show you the method I use for create creasing the diagonals. Um, I like to fold from edge to edge where possible. So first of all, we've got a corner here and a corner here that we can use. So I'm pinching into that corner, pinching into this corner, connecting the two pinches to make a single crease. Like that. Okay, so that's the first of my diagonals. With that in place, so I'm going to work from the white side from now on on this on this particular set of folds. I'm going to take the next two sections. So I'm putting a mount the mountain crease in here. So we've got two sections here, and we can fold this point to the layer behind as a reference, and that will pretty much give us our diagonal. But again, we're going to go right to the corners. So we're going to make sure the crease goes right to the corner both ways like that. I'm going to lift this paper up to reveal I'm making a firm crease there. Okay, And then we can use this as a guide for our next segment. So mountain foldings we got our two segments placing that over the other triangle and Creasing right to the corners. I've got one more diagonal to make. Right, if I unfold that back to our two bar one rectangle, you can see we've got sort of sawtooth pattern so we need to fold the other diagonal now so we folded this one we're going to fold this one and as before use that as a guide, turn the paper over, take the next segment and the next segment And the final one. So unfold that back. And that crosses both ways. But we are not done yet. Um, I'm going to fold just one segment over. Like this. Then I'm going to fold two segments over. As you can see, we've got a crease that's a diamond shape here, but we want to crease these diagonals as well. So, as before, I'm going to start from there to there, folding one of the diagonals. Because I've got this strip behind, I'm actually going to let this bit of paper flip forward as I make the fold. So I can pinch to that corner, but when I pinch to this corner, I'm lifting this, letting this flap come round to the front. There, to there, like that. And actually, we want to make a diagonal crease on this one as well. We haven't got a two section wide bit of paper, but we can use this line as our guide and this line to line it up against. So, I'm just going to take this little flap, and fold it like this, so it lies along this edge. 
and then turn over to the right side as before mounted fold a second section and fold the diagonal and then now to fold this last segment out of the way, fold this diagonal. And finally this little flap here, we're going to make that match, match these other edges. Fold. We've got our zigzag pattern there. I'm going to do the same again. One segment, two segments. We folded this diagonal. We're now going to fold this one. A lot of pre-creasing on this model, but it's worth it. Accuracy is the key. These creases should go right through the center line. So I'm just going to make this little flap match the other diagonal. Then turn the paper over, continue with these sections. So here we go again. Right, I'm actually going to unfold everything. Okay, I'll turn the paper over. I'm going to fold this single crease back in. But I'm going to make a crease on this edge as well now, which is I'm going to fold this raw edge to where these crosses meet here. So there's every point where the crosses meet, I'm going to fold this edge up to that position. So from to there, to there, all that cross. So I'm folding a thin strip. all the way across like that and what I'm going to do I'm going to turn the paper over and I'm going to make sure that the mounting crease goes through in the right direction so I'm just going to pinch the, these little creases here in, back in place through both layers This makes the assembly at the end of it a lot easier. So just pinching those in. Top crease is already there. back over to the white side and these horizontal creases are all effectively mounting folds and what we're going to do is we're going to concertina the paper so that we're going to value fold across 
to each segment. So there's a sixteenth. So I've only folded a sixteenth. And we're going to concertina the paper up. I'm going to make each of the creases individually first. So I'm just going to extend that mounting crease, fold the next segment like this. Make a firm crease as always. Then the next segment. Again. Once I've got to halfway across the paper like this, I'm going to flip it round and work from the other side. So I'll flip that round and carry on making my extra valley folds. more to do. Now we're going to concertina this up, so just put those valleys and mountains in. There we are. We've kind of made a fan. And we can see we've got a thin segment and a thick segment. Um, we're going to concentrate on the thick segment, so we've got to be careful that we're using this thick side. For this next fold. So with all of this gathered up and on the thick side you can see there's a crease already in place. I'm going to put that crease in through all of the layers. You don't have to make this hard this is just putting it through all of the layers. What we're going to be doing we're going to make in a new fold which is from this point to where this horizontal paper is. So I'm going to make this crease line up with that horizontal edge. This time very thick crease for all of the layers. Okay and then I'm going to unfold everything and back to here and the idea is we're going to be making each this new crease we've made, we're going to use that to make what's known as a double reverse fold. Um, let me show you what that will look like. So a double reverse fold will look like this. Let's show you from that side. Here's a double reverse fold. So. In order to do that, the crease we've made, one of these will already be in the right direction, but one of them will need to be reversed. And what I like to do is turn the paper over and make sure that this little triangle here is a mounting fold both ways. So even though that is already a mounting fold, I'm pinching that back in place and I'm going to pinch this mounting fold in place. So I've made a little triangle there. And I'm going to do that all the way across. So this mountain crease, pinch, and this other one, which is quite soft because we have to fold through so many layers, but pinch that in place. Work our way all the way across here.
and making this look harder than it is, it's not that difficult. Last little section to do that one, and finally that one. And this is the only one we've done so far as a as a genuine double reverse fold. But with the creases we've just made, it should be quite easy to put all of these other double reverse folds in. What I'm going to what I'm going to do now. So effectively, we can kind of reconcertina the paper and incorporate that double reverse fold, one section at a time. Two more to do. Oh. <laughs> it helps if you do it the right way around. There, let's put all of those in. There, so we've done all of our double reverse folds like that. So, well done for sticking with me for that. It gets easier, honest. Okay. Right. One other thing we're going to do. So, we've got mountains and valleys here going up and down. But what we really want is for every one of these folds from here to the end to be a there's a valley fold there we want this one to be a valley fold each of these to be valley folds as well and it's easier for this side round to just I'm going to take anything that's not a valley not a mountain from this side I'm going to turn it into a mountain so mountain crease right near the end now we're going to assemble and collapse this into a kind of a, a sickle shape. So every valley fold I see on the paper, I'm just reversing that direction so it becomes a mountain. And then every single crease on our paper is already going the right way. And we can do our collapse. Okay. And so, with all of our mounting creases put in, we're going to start our collapse. So, I'm going to turn the paper over to the plain or coloured side, and as you can see, these double reverse folds are almost in already, but Looking at this from the side, the whole idea is to do a double reverse fold there. And this little triangle here, we're going to join that, make that a little dip as well. And then the diamond must have a valley fold in the middle of it. Like that. And the paper will start to curve like this. See, there's a slight curve to that already. And that's what we want to encourage all the way across the paper. We'll make sure every crease is going the right way. So that, that that's flattened, so that needs to kind of pop so that the valley crease is obvious. And we're going to work our way all the way down the model, popping. So I'm not gathering this together very firmly at the moment, so it's just 
moderately three-dimensional but all these creases look like they're going quite nicely and as we get closer to every crease going the right way all the way down the model then and only then will we decide to try and gather it up in a bit more of a robust manner so that that I'm happy with so every crease is going the right way and is the paper's not flat anymore so now let's gather these together uh, I'm going to work on one edge I'm going to work on the little triangle edge I'm just going to gather all the little triangles together like this and as I do I'm going to try and make sure that this side is gathering as well I'm concentrating on the triangles to start with though those are coming together gathering in the next little, little section gathering and again gathering together last little section so all the triangles I've kind of gathered them all together like that this kind of fanned out to make it like a peacock shape but this with these gathered together these should also come together just as easily and you'll end up with as I mentioned a, a kind of a sickle or question mark kind of shape and to an extent that's it but there's one more fold we're going to make because if I open this out now you can see it's more of a pineapple than a uh, than a pumpkin that's because this is wide at the top we want this to be locked together to make a, a stalk and in order to lock it together to make a stalk we only need one more fold this is the edge of the stalk that we want to join and we're going to introduce a diagonal crease at 45 degrees like that and that's all we need to do to lock the stalk but we need to do that on each of these double layers so if I unfold that one move that to one side I'm going to fold the next one at 45 degrees like that and that's it and I'll just pull that away I'm going to fold the next one the paper's going to get in the way of the view but we'll try to avoid that so 45 degrees sharp crease pull it away and we'll continue down the model putting the same crease in each time and this will just help us lock the model when it comes to the final assembly Okay, so there we have it. Next job is to zoom out and have a look at the final assembly where we've got two of these units to join together. So here's our two modules and we need to turn them over to the side where you've got the double edges and it's a fairly simple connection literally just put in one tab inside here. You can take a double segment and we slot that double segment in like that. And on this side, we we'll do the same. We we'll take this, fold it over the top of that, and we need to make sure these creases all line up. And the best way to do that is to collapse this, these two sheets together as a, as a single unit. So I'm going to collapse all of that down. Here's the middle section. Let's turn it over and gather it from this side as well. So it's all 
there. We've got a full pumpkin. We just need to join the outer edges together. So as we curve this round to make it 3D shape. So it doesn't actually matter which way round we do this, but just for symmetrical purposes, I'm going to put this one on the outside of this one. So this double layer is going to go over the top of this over two segments. Like that. And it's much easier for me to turn this model over. So I'm going to line this up like this, so the creases line, are aligned together. And once we're happy that the creases are aligned, then I can unfold this double edge. So I can unfold this double edge and wrap it over the top there. And that's basically it for a, creating the general shape. So we've joined both edges together and as you can see the centre is not very tight and remember those valley folds we put the little diagonals that's all we need to do to tighten up the top of the model. So let's do that. So I'm going to put this valley fold in place and I'm going to work my way round one at a time putting that valley fold in and that will tighten up the stalk. Some of these folds might pop out, but it's easy enough to just pop them back in again. Here we go. That was the double layer, so that was a bit thicker when I was mounting folding that one. There we are, I'm nearly done. Three more creases to make. There, and that's basically it assembled. So we've got a nice tight stock now, so that's all holding together. Still a little tall perhaps, but um, I tend to open this out somewhat. Not completely flat, but I just try to make the base of my pumpkin a little bit broader to give it that feel. And there we have it. A completed pumpkin. I hope you had fun folding your ones. Um, I don't normally say this at my videos. Most people plug their YouTube videos, but I don't usually. But I do feel that I'm not getting this sort of number of views I would like. So please write some comments on this video, especially if you liked it, or especially if you're stuck on a problem with it. And also tell other people about my models because it would be really nice to spread the word and, uh, and have more people enjoy my models. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.